By April of every year in Thailand, very hot days are here in force. And it's the season too for the colourful poinciana tree to burst into blazing colour, often seen at its best in the Kanchanabri district, where a sacred cemetery is the resting place of hundreds of foreign soldiers and settlers from the region who died during World War II, when the invading Japanese Imperial Army captured and then forced them to work on what became known as the Death Railway. It went to Burma via Hellfire Pass. Prominent amongst those in attendance, two surviving POWs, Snow Fairclo and Neil McPherson, and the ambassadors from Australia and New Zealand, as this is Anzac Day 2012. We, along with Green Force, led by Major Green of the 2nd Force Machine Gun Battalion, were the first Australians to start work on the railway. For many, simply to be in attendance at the War Cemetery commemoration is the most appropriate personal tribute, and the wreaths carried to the cenotaph on behalf of Thailand, Australia and New Zealand, many other countries too and private organisations, are an expression of sorrow and a feeling of indebtedness. This is a very serene part of Thailand. Well, it is now. It has an extraordinary history, however, dating from World War II, when a railway was being built from Thailand through to Burma using enforced labour under the direction of the occupying Imperial Japanese Army. Hard to imagine now, this is such a beautiful leisure area. And even at Hellfire Pass, where some of the worst of the atrocities occurred, it's a scene of rural peacefulness. In our time, the once grim vicinity of Hellfire Pass has taken on a pastoral air of calm. And a splendid purpose-built museum tells the story of that earlier time and seeks to understand how the imperial force that menaced Southeast Asia and the Pacific could have sunk to such depths of inhumanity. Visit the museum to see the vista too, both beautiful and impenetrable and appreciate how artistry has a place in restoring sanity and calm. The pathway down to the original railway cutting is also artfully conceived and constructed and allows hundreds of visitors to descend into the Konya Cut and to crunch along the old track to the site of the dawn service held every 25th of April, where only flickering lamps break the cover of darkness in a moving acknowledgement of the dawn assault in 1915 by Anzac forces in Europe onto the staunchly defended cliffs of Gallipoli Bay, Turkey. A day of commemoration ever since. As birds herald the dawning of a new day, worshippers pay their own tribute at the central plant and wonder at the forces that somehow turn this stony mountainside into a place never to be forgotten a permanent memorial to the courage of the oppressed and the steadfastness of their brave leaders who, as is well known, often stared down the serpent in the jungle, drawing on moral authority alone when no other advantage was available to those who were enslaved as a workforce. Today there are historians who are dedicated to knowing and recording the scars of Hellfire Pass. I think every time I come here, I always learn something new, something different uh, about the railway. Um, it's, it's a unique story because it's mixed with both sadness and also, um, I would think, amazement I have at what these men physically achieve by hand. The saddest thing is if the Japanese had actually tried to do the right thing and physically look after the welfare of these men and feed them properly and use less of the brutality. This could have become one of the most famous railways in the world because of the achievement of 415 kilometres in only 17 months, 
rather than the most infamous railway. Yeah. Because even with the railways in America, going across America, there was huge loss of life. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of the loss of life here was due to disease. Mm -hmm. Malnutrition, and a lot of those diseases came also from the malnutrition that they had. They all had a vitaminosis. And therefore, that's what basically um, significantly contributed, as well as the brutality, to the huge loss of life. I remember when I travelled in 2003 with a fellow called Dr. Rolly Richards, who was on the railway in Burma. He originally thought it was so sad that so many died on this railway. Having travelled and spoken to him and we, we exchanged information, at the end of the trip, he was amazed that so many survived. An eternal remembrance of the terrible toll of war.